So in today's video, we are going to go over another example of how we are going to find the velocity of the pendulum as it swings through its equilibrium position. In this video, we're going to be given the angle of displacement. Remember, in the previous video, which you link to the upper right-hand corner of this video, you were given the height. But this video, we're given the angle of displacement, and then we're going to use our conservation of energy. Also, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step-by-Step -step Science. Get all my excellent physics chemistry and math videos. Click on the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a nice positive comment. Share this video. And I said I have made some previous videos for simple harmonic motion and pendulums, which you can link to in the upper right hand corner. But for this video, we have a pendulum and the pendulum has a length of 0 0.85 meters. It has a mass of 0 0.35 kilograms. It's pulled back from an angle of 35 degrees. This is our angle here, our angle theta. That's our angle of displacement. And we want to know what is going to be the maximum velocity, the total mechanical energy, and the period and the frequency of that pendulum. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out what is going to be the velocity of the pendulum as it swings through its equilibrium position when it's released from this position, which has an angle of displacement of 35 degrees. Now, you will notice here that this is the equilibrium position, this is the maximum displacement, and we can draw a line right across there like that, and we get a nice right triangle. A right triangle, we have the right angle over here. The length of the pendulum, L, is the hypotenuse, and we have two sides. We have our angle of displacement, 35 degrees, and using our trig's function, sine and cosine, we know that that side opposite that angle of displacement can be calculated as L times the sine of theta. Now, this side, which is adjacent to the angle, can be calculated as L times the cosine of theta. Now, we are going to use this equation, just like we did in the previous video, we derived this equation using conservation of energy, that the velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times g, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, times the height. The change is actually the change in the height of the pendulum from its equilibrium position to its greatest displacement, which that is this length right here. That's the height. Now you'll notice we know the total length. We know this side of the triangle is L cosine theta. So the height is simply going to be the total length minus the length of this side. The length of this side, which starts right here and goes to up here for our right triangle, is L times the cosine of theta. Now we can leave it like that, but we like to factor out the L, the length, and so we end up with that the height, the change in the height from the equilibrium to greatest displacement is L times 1 minus the cosine of the angle of displacement. Now we can simply go back to our original equation and substitute in for the height L times 1 minus cosine theta, and then you get that the velocity is simply equal to the square root of 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared. I left off the units for my space issues here, times the length, which is 0, 0,85, and then we have times 1 minus the cosine of 35 degrees, which is our angle of displacement. Okay, and if you do that and you take the square root, then you'll end up with the velocity of 1.74 meters per second. That is the velocity of the pendulum when it swings through the equilibrium position when it's released from an angle of 35 degrees. Okay, so that's the maximum velocity. Now we're going to figure out what's the total mechanical energy. Remember, the total mechanical energy of the pendulum is constant at any point and is simply calculated as the total mechanical energy is equal to the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. Now we already know the velocity down here, and we know down here also that the potential energy, because it's at its lowest position, is going to be zero joules. There's no height, the poten potential, the pendulum therefore has no potential energy. But we do know it's kinetic energy, that's one half mv squared, and we know this is the maximum velocity, so we can calculate the maximum kinetic energy and that is going to be equal to the total mechanical energy because the potential energy is zero. We simplify that to the total mechanical energy is the zero, excuse me, is equal to the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is one half mv squared, and that is one half times the mass, 0 0.35 kilograms, times the velocity squared. Don't forget to square just the velocity, 1.74 meters per second squared, and then you come up with a kinetic energy of 0.5 joules. That's the kinetic energy at the bottom. Now it has no potential energy, so we know that the total mechanical energy is equal to the kinetic energy, 
and uh, or plus the potential energy, but it's zero, and that's 0 0.53 joules. Now, we can also, let's just make sure we're clear about this. When we swing this up and it swings to its maximum displacement, it's at its maximum height, and when it reaches maximum height, then the velocity is zero. So therefore, the kinetic energy down here has been converted into potential energy, so it has no kinetic energy because it's not moving, but it's at its greatest height. So um, uh, therefore, we know that the potential energy at this position is going to be 0 0.53 joules. Okay, for conservation of energy and total mechanical energy, the total mechanical energy, any place where the pendulum is swinging, is always going to be equal to 0 0.53 joules. It's just converting back and forth from kinetic to potential, and then from potential to kinetic energy. Okay, that's the second part of that, and now we're going to figure out what is the period and the frequency. Now, in this case, we know the length, so we can simply use this equation that the period is equal to 2 times pi times the square root of the length divided by g, that's g, that's g as in g as in gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, 9.81 meters per second squared, that's not g as in mass like grams or something like that. Sometimes people get confused with that. And therefore, it's just 2 times pi times the square root of 0 0.85, which is the length, times acceleration due to gravity. We're just going to assume this pendulum is on Earth, although it didn't say that, but you can make that assumption, I think, 9.81 meters per second squared. And you get that the period of that pendulum is 1.85 seconds. Okay, now for the frequency, because we know that the frequency and the period are inversely proportional to each other, so the frequency is just, frequency is just 1 over the period. And therefore, you can say that the frequency is 1 divided by 1.85 seconds, and you get that the frequency is 0 0.54 hertz. Okay, so there you go. That is all three of those things, the maximum velocity, the mechanical energy, potential, and kinetic, and the period and the frequency of that pendulum, which has that mass and that length, and it's released from an angle of 35 degrees. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You should give me a thumbs up for this video, please. You should please leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. I always want to know what you think of the videos. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.